A brave pair of lionesses is about to attempt the impossible. They are determined to take down the giraffe. But what lies beyond the lens? What does it take to capture scenes like these? We follow filmmaker Owen Prune deep into Tanzania's Ruaha National Park, where he lived amongst lions for more than 10 years. Step by step, he gained the trust of the animals and was able to shoot pictures that show behavior never been filmed before. How does it feel to film lions up close and personal? Let Owen himself tell his story and lead you into the heart of the African wilderness. When I first arrived in the Ruhr, almost 10 years ago, I had no idea what the subject for my next film would be. A vast, ecologically rich and unexplored wilderness lay before me. A real challenge. It was difficult at first. Then it all started to become clear. It was going to be a film about lions. In all my years working across Africa, I'd never seen so many large prides in such high densities and in such good condition. And so I set about getting to know them. It took months for them to get used to me being around, day in, day out. Allowing me in to capture their diverse understory. The key was to get the lions to trust me. The concept of waiting for them to enter my space rather than me invading theirs. I wanted them to consider me an advantage rather than a hindrance. Like allowing them to rest in the shade of my vehicle during a hunt while I sweated it out in 40 degrees Celsius. Pretty soon, though, I felt like a part of the team of hunters, with not so dissimilar goals in reality. There is a downside, though, to being perceived as part of a pride of buffalo hunters. You become the target of the protectors of the herd. This can be a bit rough on the bodywork of the old faithful land cruisers. But a small price to pay for the privilege of being allowed in to capture the very essence of these magnificent cats. Filming a hunt in thick terrain can present its own challenges. You have to be prepared for every eventuality. On this particular occasion, the lions had pushed the already fatally wounded buffalo right up against my vehicle. 
which meant there wasn't enough space for the pride to surround the buffalo and to close the deal, so to speak. That's when having an extra little remote camera in your box of tricks can be useful. I had to move my vehicle for the kill to run its natural course. So with the small camera carefully placed on the ground, I moved out to look for another angle. That's when one youngster decided to test his own skills as cameraman. Which was fine, as long as he didn't swallow the bloody thing. Uh, cameras are still okay, it's still rolling, there we go. Ruaha has become a kind of second home for me. I spend sometimes up to six months of the year here. The lions love it in camp. The shade of the rocks in summer and the warmth emanating from them in winter. They don't seem to mind having me around. You might call it a peaceful coexistence for the most part. Here I feel like I'm part of a diverse community, Ali without humans. The resident pride leader has even taken to leaving her cubs in camp when she goes off on a night hunt. It is really quite an honor for me, but sometimes I can't sleep until she returns. Fancy that, I've become a worrisome babysitter 5,000 miles from home. My social contact with fellow humans are limited to short stays from the very talented and friendly bush mechanics from the local village, which is a full day's drive away. We have a good laugh together. They think I'm a bit crazy living out here alone with lions. Often we'll work through the night to get the vehicles ready. Because the following morning, the show must go on. One of the downsides of unscripted storytelling is that the actors don't take their cue from the director. The days can lead to weeks without the chance to even roll the cameras. This can be very demoralizing, but out here you are in the hands of something beyond your control. You need to have faith that your time will come and try not to make any mistakes when that big moment arrives. A full takedown of an adult giraffe had thus far eluded cameramen and this sequence became the holy grail for me. To capture this elusive behavior became my personal quest. But what happened on this day was beyond my wildest expectations. Two lionesses from the small resident pride initiated the chase. A large neighboring pride heard the commotion and ran in to investigate. 
The local lionesses had caught the giraffe, but now there were two prides on the same kill. That's when I realized the behavioral significance of it all. Cooperative hunting between two prides on a full-grown giraffe. My heart was pounding, but I had to keep my cool. No mistakes. And then if that wasn't enough, a third pride suddenly arrived out of nowhere. I recognized the leader of this pride as she approached the kill. I kept the focus on her. Then a big fight broke out. Some members of the large pride were injured badly and chased off. Then parts of all three prides were feeding from the same kill. A complex situation that would need careful analysis and unraveling. But that would come later. Another important objective for me was to focus on the male lion story. In general, males had been typecast in nature films as the lazy lords of the pride. And that cliché certainly didn't fit the profile here. Here it was not uncommon for males to have more than one pride and territory. They covered huge areas, forming coalitions that went hunting together. were not always successful, but the word lazy was a misleading adjective for these incredible cats. It is difficult being separated from family for such long periods. A few weeks in the middle of a six-month shoot is an essential interlude. And for the children, a very exciting one at that. because the lions allow us to stay in their castle, right in the very heart of their kingdom. And yes, we have to be extra careful during this time, and there are strict rules that need to be adhered to. The lines are literally and clearly drawn into the sand that can't be crossed. But it is important to me that my children get to experience this other world that is disappearing so rapidly from our planet. I can only hope that my films will contribute in some way to help preserve this very special place. Being here in Rua is just like being on top of the world. Thanks to Owen for his outstanding work and exceptional dedication. 
To let your wildlife adventure continue, just click on the Nature is Brutal playlist and check out more of our unique videos. Please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the alert button so you don't miss our future uploads. See you next time.